So I'm with Neil March from Music of Sound. He's gonna tell us about how he wrote the song Second Light. So basically that's the intro to the song Second Light, which is a new single by the music of sound. And it's the only time that that little sequence appears in the song, which is quite an unusual thing to do, but it's something that I noticed that Paul McCartney does with some of his songs. I just thought it'd be nice to kind of have a little intro that just kind of sets the scene and then you get into the actual main part of the song. So, okay, tell me about how you wrote the main song. It's quite an unusual chord pattern because, you know, most songs tend to have three or four chords that are kind of the song is built around and then other bits and bobs that come in between. But with this one, I wrote it almost like I'd write a classical piece where the notes are very fluid, they don't really sit for very long on one chord. So for instance, like the, the main kind of tune that comes in at the beginning, you've got this pattern that goes... Um, so what you've got there is, is kind of a D major 7 to a D major 6 to a D major 9 and then again with C major 7, C major 6 and although it doesn't really matter what the chords are I'm only telling you that because that's the facts but what you're hearing is a pattern that's sort of moving all the time it's not sitting statically on one chord at any point in the song so you've got this it's so cold out here sings it not me and she sings a lot better than I do but you hear how the tune kind of interacts with what the piano is playing the next bit of the song it is more static so it's like so you've got like one chord but even that chord i could have just played it as an a minor seven which would be that but i wanted it to sound a bit more exotic so i put this suspended fourth in there so you get this and it just sounds a little bit more interesting you get and then the bass changes underneath the chord there so it goes from an A to a D, but the chord stays the same. But because you've changed your note underneath it, it becomes a different chord. And then that takes us back into that, that pattern again. So it's all kind of thinking about how you can use chords, use bass notes, use little melodies to make the piano part just move along and just be more fluid and interesting. And it kind of goes with what Florrie's singing on the track as well. So tell me about the instrumental section where the flute plays a tune. So again, I mentioned Paul McCartney at the beginning of the song about him being an influence on the, the intro. And this is this bit also, I, I'm gonna put my hand up and say, Paul McCartney also influenced this a little bit because there's a Beatles song that I really love called Fool on the Hill, where they actually use recorders rather than flute, but it's a similar kind of tune. And you've got this bouncing um, kind of... ...thing on the piano and the flute playing... Da -da 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 -da. The tune is almost like something like a Russian composer like Borodin or Mussorgsky or something like that might have written, but it also has this kind of Beatles uh, sensibility about it as well. But what again I is interesting, coming back to what I was saying about trying to make the piano part fluid, is it doesn't sit for very long on one chord. And you get these subtle little chords that change a key. So you get this, um, this. the key up to this and then this changes the key back again so you get these little like one chord 
that just shifts the key and it just makes the music sound that much more interesting and it, it really kind of enhances what the flute plays. Um, so yeah, again, a little bit of Paul McCartney, maybe a little bit of Borodin, <laughs> but just something that made the song, you know, consciously, how can I make this more interesting than just banging out one chord all the time. the ending of the song yes yeah, so the ending it, it's is carrying on doing what the piano was doing before but again it's this idea that you just use one little chord to change a key and it allows you to extend the ending so you hear something is different to the rest of the song so you get to to the end and it's um, um second light nine. in the first verse from there you go straight into the instrumental. This time you go, um, I'm a second line. And then you get this key change again. I'm a second line. And then again the key change. And this time it takes you back into that bit where the flute plays. So it's just using just extended ideas where introducing one chord allows you to kind of stretch out and you can hear that there's something different about how the song finishes. Yeah, 